What's up guys, I'm Dunmere, top 100 Overwatch player, and I'm going to tell you guys how to play Baptiste in this guide. So I'm going to start off by going over what changed from Overwatch 1, how the abilities are and all that kind of stuff, and I'm going to talk about the character from a general perspective of how you should play him, and then I'm going to finish by going over Chorong, an Overwatch League player's gameplay from a comp match, and just talk about all the little tips he does, positioning, all that sort of stuff. So, starting off right here, the first thing that changed about Baptiste is they buffed his regenerative burst from 75 healing to 100 total which is a pretty solid buff considering if you're applying that to five teammates total, including yourself. They did, however, nerf the range of his primary fire, the minimum fall off range. So you're doing, you're starting to deal less damage from a closer range, um, but it's not too much of a big deal. They also did a big buff of giving Baptiste 13 shots to his healing here that you can see, um, and instead of having a B10 like it was before. So. Decent amount of buffs, nothing too crazy, but you know, nothing fundamental, right? So Baptiste in general has less responsibilities in Overwatch 2 versus Overwatch 1. Because you don't have two tanks to be healing and you have, you know, less grouping together of your teammates, you're going to be focusing more on dealing damage rather than just healing. Like, as you can see here, I am pumping in a lot of damage into my D.Va and Rex to try and like maximize the healing on it. but. I am also focusing on dealing a little bit of damage when the opportunity arises because I don't have, like I said, as many responsibilities. So um, moving on into how to play the character in general. First, you're really going to want to focus on just playing like a decent distance from enemies. You don't really get a lot of value being close. And then you want to pump some damage into the enemies, pump some um, healing into your teammates and being in a position that's safe, but where you can just primary fire and heal your team. So even though you are dealing less damage than in Overwatch 1, you really do want to be trying to make sure that you're keeping your tank alive. Like, I mean, I know it sounds a little bit obvious, but it is really important that you do focus on keeping that tank alive. So you do deal a lot more healing with direct, so make sure you're just hitting right on top of your tank. And um, I mean, like, kind of like at their hips, feet area. So if you do miss, you still hit them with the healing. But yeah, that's your that's your main focus is keeping your healing, your tank up, because you still are, you know, a healer, right? For regen burst, regen burst is a really powerful ability that lets you defend yourself essentially, because it's the only way Baptiste can defend himself and gain healing of his own. But I guess he also has immortality field, but the only way he can heal himself is with um, using regen burst. So you're really going to want to be trying to mainly focus on using that for yourself. But if you're not really playing against things that need that can dive onto you, like you're not playing against like a tracer or a Genji or something like that, it's okay for you to use it to just heal up a group of teammates around you. Right, when everyone starts getting a little bit low. Um, but that's not the primary. The primary thing of it is really just to help yourself, mainly. If um, your tank can survive dealing a lot of damage while you're playing, that's kind of like I was talking about where it's time to deal damage. Like as you can see me in this gameplay right here, my diva's doing perfectly fine. So when that Sojourn got out of position, it was okay for me to try and frag out, you know? And so, like I said, there's a little bit more about this flexibility that Baptiste has, where he doesn't have to just focus mainly on on healing constantly all the time it just should be the primary focus of it though so as you can see also as i'm playing here i'm charging up my exo boots a lot and you might be looking at the kind of like i'm just doing a weird little tick or something like that but in reality i'm using it because i'm consistently trying to charge up my um i'm consistently trying to use it to save myself essentially so as you can see against this, this reinhardt that jumped onto me i use it to dive away you don't always have to have it like up all the time or you don't need to be like actively jumping all the time because it does make you have a really predictable movement pattern, you know, because you go up and then you come down. It's very easy to kill people who are jumping like that, but it's really useful to have that in case like, I don't know, you see a, a tracer like triple linking onto you or whatever so that you can dive away or you can jump away and not uh, be killed by like them trying to pulse bomb you or something like that, right? It's basically like a contingency, a contingency ability to have up, which is why you can see me always kind of like having it partially charged, right? Assuming you don't need to move forward with it because it does require you to crouch, right? For Immortality Field, which is like the true reason that you play Baptiste, usually, it's extremely, extremely valuable to just save something's life, right? Now, with that, you got to also kind of like keep in mind that there's multiple ways to do that. Like, do you use it particularly to save a teammate that, you know, is just low all the way across the corner, all the way across the way? Or do you use it mainly to save like your teammates who get stuck in a Gravathon Surge or something like that. That's a situation-based thing. If you're looking at your composition and you're playing, or the enemy's composition and you're playing against like a Zarya or, um, you know, one of these, like a Sigma, 
something that can kill you very consistently with their ultimate and something that makes you very vulnerable then in those situations it's best to hold on to your your ultimate for that sorry your your uh, lamp for that but otherwise like you know let's just say i'm see my diva take too much damage it's fine for me to just toss it in or support her and keep her up you do just have to be kind of aware not to like let it become too um not to let it become too close of a attempt because if you do use it in a way where you know you're tossing it to a teammate that's really far away there's a good chance it'll land too late and you won't actually save them especially if they have like low hp to start with so but you can use it like this and i keep the debuff make sure she doesn't die so um for the ultimate as you've seen me use it multiple times in this footage i use it for, like from a high ground individual value to pump extra healing into my team or frag out there's two primary ways in which you want to use it um i guess there's technically three but you're basically either using it for just pure damage or you're using it for pure healing right so you're really going to want to be using it either to just get extra healing or extra like damage on a straightaway like for example um direct ahead where my team is i could toss it in front of my team let them damage through it if i feel like the enemy is exposed enough like they've gone into like an open area or i can use it to um or i can use it to get a bunch of healing in like let's just say like from here if i popped right now my team's hitting like a heavy brawl against an enemy i could use it to support them a lot more you know and then the last one is just like i use it the very first time i use it where i use it to frag the mercy you pop it in the middle of a fight in a place where you have a good high ground advantage and you just deal damage on something so all right guys now we're gonna go over some gameplay from a replay code i have of a professional overwatch league player's gameplay which is really neat so things we're really going to be paying a lot of attention to is how the abilities are being used um whether he's attacking probably with his primary fire or healing you know when he's deciding to do that sort of stuff and when he's using or like how his positioning is essentially something that's a unique little trick you can do with baptiste is at basically the same rate you can fit in a primary fire in between um healing shots and so while it's good to try and do that sometimes it's also a little bit risky in a way even though it doesn't actually reduce your uptime very much or at all um just because you also have to be aware of the fact that it does make your aim more difficult so if you're you know trying to fit in these extra primary fire, primary fires like you're hitting a healing grenade primary fire healing grenade primary fire and it's causing you not to hit directs on your on your zarya then you know you're not going to be getting nearly as much value out of it so Moving from here though, Baptiste is very good at holding and taking, or not taking high grounds because he's weak, but holding high grounds. Baptiste also does get a lot of value from high grounds, um, mainly because he can access them, you can drop from them and jump back up to them and all that kind of stuff. That's very, very useful. But as the most mobile, in like immobile support, you're going to frequently be pushing the payload a lot. Um, our Baptiste does get a little bit caught out being underneath here, but it's usually what you'll end up doing. You have to like learn how to support your teammates from that sort of situation. The Baptiste player here did something really, really useful. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind it a second. Um, whenever you do get caught out with a graviton surge, you always want to try and put your lamp in a position, your immortality field in a position where it's likely to take the least amount of damage. As you can see, like, kind of hard to see, but um, he ends up tossing it like directly behind him in the corner. So like if a teammate wants to push in to get it, or if the enemy wants to push forward to try and kill it, it's going to be in the corner. So they have to go further and get more exposed. So that's really, really valuable. Like if the enemy is down range and they use an ultimate on you of some sort, like, you know, a Sigma lamp or whatever, or a Sigma ultimate or, you know, like a Graviton Surge or a window or something like that. If you put the lamp behind a corner, the immortality field behind a corner, then you're not going to be able to be, it's not going to be broken. So you can't die if you walk, if you don't walk out of it. But you do have to be aware about how line of sight works. So if the lamp doesn't have a direct line of sight on your body, then you will die. So um, it's not just like permanently the circle, right? So like I said before, on Baptiste, you really are going to be wanting to be mainly focusing on just like pumping damage into the core of your Zarya. That's really what you can see Chorong doing here the most. But when something does get low, um, he does try and support them because he is playing with a Lucio and the Lucio is not going to be able to sustain too much on something that's like too far away. Like it's not the main focus, um, but since he does have a Baptiste on his team, or sorry, a Zarya, 
Sorry, Genji on his team, who is playing far away. Um, it is something that he's also keeping his eyes for, his eyes out for. But he's always trying to keep the um, keep the main support focus. Here, his positioning ended up getting a little bit too forced into being too aggressive. Um, before he'd been playing up in this high ground right here, where he's safe and it's harder for things to dive onto him. There's fewer things I can see him. But when his Zarya ends up dropping and getting a little bit too aggressive, he pushes in to try and support. And uh, pushes and walks into the lamp. So what you can see Baptiste also do here is because, because Regenerative Burst gives you an instant burst of health, essentially what you do is you wait until the lamp is... Um, when, you have, when you're using lamp with Regenerative Burst, what you can basically do is, you know, go forward, pop the lamp right. Here he only has 73 HP. Oops, oh, I did not mean to do that. Yeah, here we go. 73 HP, right? And so he sits there and waits for the lamp and him to just take damage. Now he only has 20, but then right as the lamp's about to be over, he uses Regenerative Burst and um, he's immediately up to full HP. So, or, you know, near full HP, essentially. So it's really, really valuable and will keep you from getting killed a lot. That's something you also notice with the way that Chorong uses the lamp a lot, is that he uses it in a way where it will allow him to like take a break from healing essentially. Like for example, if he feels like he can stop healing his teammate for a second because the lamp's on them, then he might use that to start dealing some damage. Um, and then start killing them when the lamp's breaking. Like I said, it is breakable by enemies, but it's also, um, if it's in being put into, uh, if it's put in a safe location, enemies can't really break it. So, you're not too at risk of, like, not healing your teammates for a moment. And then right as it ends, you start chunking damage, ch chunking healing into your teammates and then pop your regenerative burst to get everyone back up. Um, it's part of the reason why Baptiste Lamp is so powerful. <laughs> it's a very, very powerful ability. So going back into these sort of things, you really are always going to want to be like playing essentially one corner behind your your support. Oh, sorry, your main tank or your only tank, right? As you can see, he's basically always playing like a certain range away from his his Zarya and using cover around it, right? Playing to the point where he could just kite back a little bit to get behind a corner, but is not too far away from his Zarya that he can't see it effectively. So. Zarya ends up going really aggressive, and that does force him to push forward into it. But he didn't waste his lamp earlier, and didn't play in a dangerous location where he'd take much damage and have to, like, use his lamp on himself so that he was able to save his Zarya. Like, if you're keeping the uptime well, usually what you're going to be doing is just constantly chunking out your lamp onto your own Zarya and your, your main primary tank character to keep them alive. Here you're going to see a, like, open space ultimate with this lamp, or with this window. It's very useful for forcing enemies to take a lot of damage when they push too far in. If they push forward because they're walking out in like to a straight area, um, it's a really good time to pop the window just because as soon as they're actually like forced to walk into it, they'll take a lot of damage. Like I'll show you before we go back. Um, they do end up using like a Kiriko ult that just kind of allows them to push right through it. But right here with this, if his team's here and the enemy is like doesn't have this ultimate up, they're stuck in the open versus it. And they're probably going to kill uh, these other players right here and force them to be in too dangerous of a position for a long time, essentially. When your team's not really taking damage yet, it's a good time to pump some, pump some damage at the enemy. The ultimate is a strong one. You always want to be charging as much as possible. And it's usually best to try and like you don't don't waste your regen burst on yourself just because you've taken a little bit of poke damage like for example you've taken like 100 damage right now like as you can see Trong taking 100 damage and didn't use his regen burst because he knew that he's not being threatened at this point like right here he's fine chilling takes a little bit of poke damage a little chunk of damage, but he's still not taking so much that he's going to die anytime soon. There's no enemies on him. So you can hold it, wait, 
and then um, use it later on when he needs it to try and help sustain his team and sustain his Arya in the graph. So it's extremely valuable to that. And like I was saying earlier, if you're playing against no teammate or no enemies that are really capable of like diving onto you, like a Tracer or Genji or something like that, then it's not too big of a deal to try and like it's not it's not as much of a deal big deal to like use the regenerative burst early because you're less likely to need it. But you never know when like you just get you know chunked in the face by like an ass shot and your your half health like Chongrang is right now. And then you want to um you know have it to keep yourself to allow yourself to like get back into a healing position to be able to support your teammates. So that's basically what you gotta be thinking about. Is like whether you know the longer you can hold it, the longer you don't need it, and instead like play this patience game of letting your your second support heal you up, or you know, even the payload, because the payload does heal you a little bit, then you'll get a lot more value. Because people do end up using these sort of things a lot. Definitely waste them very often. When somebody does get um, a Lucio beat going on, you do have to keep trying to heal through it. Especially on something like a Genji. Um, you don't like when there's a beat and everyone on your team is, is full health to start with, it's not an issue because the only damage that your teammates are taking is damage from onto the the temporary health. But if you have something like like his Genji who was low, when the temporary health is over, they'll still be low HP. Um, because it doesn't like doesn't heal them or anything like that. So that's what you gotta be starting to keep out. Like if no one on your team is low to start with and they get a beat, they're not taking any damage that's actually damaging them, so just you know, deal damage. Just pump damage on the enemies. But if they are low to start with, then you really do be need to be more careful about it. And as you can see here, when you start losing, right, um, as soon as a Zarya dies, Throng instantly realizes that his team is dead. And there's no winning this. Maybe that's one dead. And he's like, oh, okay. I'm dead too. Time to just go to the payload and stall it out. Because when you are dying and you're basically like certain to die, just go to the payload. Other situations, you definitely would have tried to live longer and just survive. But um, in that situation, he was like 100% going to die. So we just off the payload. This is a very aggressive play from him. Um, he's definitely looking to like try and get some... Trying to get some damage in from an aggressive position. And he ended up using it a bit too aggressively. Couldn't really tell the enemy were there. Um, probably want to like sneak a frag onto the enemy and push the, the tide of that fight, but you went a little bit too aggressive there. So you do have to be more careful about that. Again, high grounds are really, really powerful. High grounds are very, very powerful because it lets you control like whether you want to drop down onto them or whether you want to use them to like just stand on top of. They give you an option and you're safer in general just because you can back up from the high ground and then they can no longer see you. So whenever you can play them, you definitely, definitely should. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can get a little bit aggressive and drop down for them and, and die. But using the, the jump ability is powerful but you do have to be kind of aware of like whether you're using it too often and too dangerously because what will happen oftentimes is that you will get you will get hit very much from a like extra damage being pumped into you just because of the fact that you're exposing yourself too much because as i've talked about like when you're jumping in the air you become very very vulnerable because you have a very consistent arc to your jump and so if you're doing it in the line of sight of like a hit scan, like a Widowmaker or an Ash, you're kind of going to get rolled. So um, don't do that, um, though you can use it sometimes when like a behind a corner. You get an easier shot on like a far away enemy, their far away teammate. It'll give you an easier way to heal them more consistently because the angle's better. So, yeah. If you're looking for some more Overwatch 2 content, then make sure to check out these videos I have right here. Like I said, I'm a top 100 Overwatch player, so I have lots of videos and things to share with you guys.